Welcome to Yacht Crew Vlogs, where we tell the stories of those in the yachting industry. A behind the scenes look that discovers the individuals in the industry, their history, their passions, and what inspires them to do what they do. Hi everyone, and welcome to another edition of Yacht Crew Vlogs right here on Yachting International Radio. My name is Rhea, I am your host, and I'm very pleased to welcome my next guest, Nikki Vo. How are you? Good, thank you, Rhea. Lovely to be here. Yeah, well, let me introduce Nikki to those of you who don't know her. She is the Boat Princess. Um, she is the host of a popular podcast, and you'll have to check that one out. She's also a marina entrepreneur. And yes, I'm reading this because the list goes on forever, and I have no idea where she gets the energy to do it. Um, she is a marina entrepreneur, boating advocate, podcast host, blogger. Uh, she is director on the board of the Marine Industry Association in Australia and a uh, contributor to the well to two well-known uh, marine magazines, as well as a mother of two. And she has a mission of inspiring women to explore the world of boating. Is there anything that I've missed? <laughs> I don't, well, I've got a few other businesses on the side, you know, but the, you know, that, that's probably enough. <laughs> I, I'm, I'm exhausted just thinking about this huge long list of things that you have to, I mean, you know, on a daily basis that you have to deal with. It is absolutely <laughs> phenomenal. But let's talk about you now you didn't just become all this, it, you know, you were shaped. Um, where were you born and, and how did you grow up? Oh, okay. I, brought, I grew up in the UK. Okay. Fairly normal sort of family, lovely family that surrounded me. Um, and uh, so Southeast England, spent most of my holidays in uh, sort of mid-South um, UK um, at a place called Pool Harbour. And that's where my love of boats started. We used to go um, on a holiday every year um, on an island with a castle on it. Of course, it's England. Yeah. And, um, and there was a little boat that used to take us across to that island. Obviously, it was the only way of getting there. She was called Castello. And she was a gorgeous little timber, 30 foot, 1964 I think she's got like a 90 horsepower engine or something, you know, chug, 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 chug across the yeah. island. And of course, she always took me to my happy place. You know, that was my holiday every year. So um, I've totally fell in love with that boat and have always um, loved boats ever since that and always felt that being on a ba boat makes you happy. So because it's taking you to your happy place. So that's. That's, I guess, where my boating childhood, and I used to go sailing with my dad just on a GP14 dinghy sailing, and, and um, that was some special moments with my dad that were, were quite special. So, um, so I guess that's my kind of boating side of my childhood. Yeah. So what got you over to Australia? I came over here on a working holiday for a year, um, and about three months into it, I met my darling husband. And no intention of going into a relationship or anything like that. But we, I mean, you can't choose who you fall, fall in love with, right? If he's on the other side of the world, he's on the other side of the world. So, and 30 years later, we're still married. Nice. And you've had two strapping young boys. I have got two huge, huge young men in my life. <laughs> they are, they are my, um, my greatest achievement. Absolutely. Um, and I'm so incredibly proud of the wonderful human beings that they are and, and what they're achieving and their work ethic and all those sorts of things. They are really awesome young men that I am so incredibly proud of. Yeah. Well, tell us a little bit about your marinas then. There are two of them. Where are they located? So one of them is in um, a national park just outside Sydney. So um they're kind of it's kind of uh, about 35 minutes north of sydney central in a beautiful national park there's 200 berths um amazing location with beautiful hills around it so it's very um protected um and it's 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 idyllic it's i literally have to pinch myself when i go down there and say wow this is where i work you know it's it's absolutely beautiful um, lovely restaurant down there and we just um, 
have 200 births in that one place, we've got a full hard stand facility. So um, all of the services that people need to look after their boats and so on and so forth. And then we not long ago, October of last year, purchased a second uh, marina, which is up in um, Lake Macquarie. Now, Lake Macquarie, for those of who even in Australia are aware of, um, is three times the size of Sydney Harbour. So it's a massive, massive um, area for boating as well. And uh, it's a 250 berth marina, again, with a full hard stand facility. So both of those marinas are on incredible waterways. Um, there, are, there are two kind of main boating water, waterways in Sydney. There's the the Sydney Harbour side of us, and then there's the Pittwater and Hawkesbury, which is the north side. And the Pittwater and Hawkesbury waterways are so peaceful and so beautiful and full of moorings everywhere to just pick up. And so it's it's beautiful, wonderful boating. We're really blessed in Australia with the boating that we have. Let me ask you, I mean, there's been stories throughout the news. I, I covered Finland has seen, you know, just since the pandemic, a huge surge in first time boaters. Um, and boat sales, as well as the U.S. I mean, that's been hitting headlines all over. How many mm. people are getting into boating for the first time? So many, so much so that they couldn't even, they didn't even have boats to sell left um, with supply shortages yep. and that kind of thing. Yep. Was Did that impact Australia in the same way as well? Did you see boating increase? Absolutely. Yeah, an incredible number of people have come into boating and um, it's, it's, again, we've had those same issues with lack of stock. Um, even in secondhand boats, we've had lack of stock issue, issues. Um, and it's, uh, it's great to see a whole influx of new people coming into boating. Because to be honest, before the pandemic, boating was on the decline in Australia. Um, there was, uh, we were up against uh, really great cruising, traveling overseas, um, holiday homes, all those other ways people were spending their money instead of boating. And then all of a sudden the pandemic hit and boating was one of the few COVID safe activities that you could do and you could completely get away from everybody and feel like you were in a different space. I mean, there's boating places we can go to near Sydney that you feel you're in the middle of nowhere, but you've literally dri driven halfway up the the half an hour in the car and then hopped on your boat and gone to the middle of nowhere. So um, massive, massive increase in the number of people that buying boats, in the number of people who are actually using their boats because there were plenty of people before that were so busy traveling or traveling for business or things like that. They weren't using their boats and all of a sudden they were using their boats. So um, Yes, huge, huge influx of people into boating. And it's exciting to see people that have never even thought about boating getting into it. It's really good. Yeah. One of the things that has proven to be a little bit of a hit, um, regardless, boating is still on the increase, but is the fuel prices, especially in the US. Um, is yep. that affecting Australia as well at the moment? Look, I don't, I don't think it's... Um, it is, it is an issue. We do have a, a substantial increase in the fuel. But honestly, if you own a $4 million boat, is it, you know? Yeah. <laughs> um, and those sailors perhaps aren't using their engines as much and, and putting the, their sails up a bit more often, which is great. Or they're just going for a shorter trip or then maybe not going up to Hamilton Island as so many do in winter. They all stay, stay down near Sydney instead and, and not spend that fuel going up there. So, but I haven't seen, in fact, our fuel sales at the marinas have been up. So in volume, not price, in volume. So um, I, I don't think that that's affecting our boating here in Australia at this point. Now, one of the things that did bring you to my attention was you are a champion of women getting into boating. Have you seen an increase over the past few years of women that are showing interest, women that are buying boats themselves? Absolutely. Yeah. I, I, and I think um, we're on the traje trajectory. We've really got to work on that. Um, and that's one of my purposes to do, to do that. Um, but in the last week or so, I've had two brokers 
two separate brokers tell me of female clients they've got looking for $20 million vessels. Wow. Now that is a, you know, that is a new thing, right? It used to be guys only that would be doing that. Now the girls are doing it independently. Um, and that's really, really exciting. Um, and that's something we need to make the, the boat builders very aware of that they need to start taking women seriously. I've got another um, friend who's a, she, she and her partner are, are a couple and they're both captains and she is looking for a boat on behalf of her client. And yet when she, and when she approaches the brokers, they always immediately talk to him, not to her. And she's the one that's actually going to choose the boat, make the decision, so on and so forth. So yes, absolutely seeing a big difference in it. Absolutely getting a lot more women coming to me and saying, how to get, how do I get my boat license? How do I get involved? All those sorts of things. But that is the pure purpose of the Boat Princess podcast to get more women to boating and to get more women into the boating industry. Do you think that marketing um, is kind of holding women back in the fact that it is still geared to sort of the middle-aged white man um, straight across the board? Absolutely. Yeah, the, the old uh, pale male and stale is, is very much an issue in boating. Um, and so we need to increase that diversity and it's, uh, it was fabulous to see um, some women that had come to Sanctuary Cove Boat Show recently um, that because of my influence had come to that boat show and hadn't been felt comfortable to do so before this year. So, um, and it's, uh, and they were women of colour too. So that's, we need to increase that diversity and we need to, you know, boating has got this elitism attached to it and we need to try and get rid of that. We need to try and get as many people on kayaks, tinnies, whatever. I mean, and, and tinnies have been life-saving recently here in the floods. You know, the tinny brigade have been out there saving people's lives, literally. So um, this, um, we've got to make comfort people feel comfortable about coming into boating, about women coming into the boating industry and, and about diverse races coming into our, our lifestyle and our industry as well. And how do you do that? Do you think it is just the images that people see um, and, and sort of the podcasts and that kind of thing that come across people's computers displaying? I guess if I go to a movie and I see somebody that looks like me or I see a magazine that sees it's somebody that looks like me, that means to me, it means that's for me. Um, that's exactly is that the same way? Yeah. Yeah, and I don't know if you've seen the latest uh, American Go Boating campaign. No. Um, it's, a, it's an advert that uh, Go Boating have put together in the US. And if you look at it very carefully, there's all different people of different age groups, different lifestyles, different race throughout that ad. Because just like you said, if, we're, if we can't see ourselves in the advertising, we won't relate to it. So that's exactly what they've done in that campaign, which I was really, really pleased to see. It's really exciting to see, to see that happening. Do you think that the marine industry is sort of starting to head that way to open up more sort of late to the game? Well, I hope so, because, um, you know, boating is, is such a, an amazing thing to enjoy. Um, and being in the boating industry is, you know, I, I mean, the, the smile on my face comes from being out on a boat and, and being in the boating industry. I mean, could it be any better? So the more people we get into it, I reckon, the, the happier people will be, right? So it's a, it's a simple formula. If we can get more and more people doing boating, and, and you'll have seen Wallace J. Nichols' work on Blue Mind and, and all of that, um, there is a psychological effect when you get out on a boat. So the more people we have on a boat enjoying that lifestyle and with that smile on their face and, and kind of counteracting the stresses they're going through in their lives, how good is that? Well, I have to agree with you because, you know, in Canada throughout the COVID, what happened after COVID is that a lot of people were suffering from, um, of course, depression and, and different mental health issues. And there were... 
um, psychologists that were actually giving prescriptions to go hiking in the mountains. You, you know, certain trails or certain parks, you would get free admission to go and spend yep. time there for your mental health. And it's the same with boating, you know, to go out on a boat and it, it just, it frees you, you know, everything lifts off and you're not in front of a computer. You're not, you know, seeing the constant inundation of negative news that we are used to seeing every single day through our computers. Um, it is a relief. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Now tell me a little bit more about the Boat Princess podcast. What can people expect from that? So the Boat Princess podcast is me interviewing a whole bunch of really interesting people from the boating industry and also incredible boaters. So, and I um, go back into their childhood. I also talk about um, what they actually do and how they've got there, what, what has been their path to how they've got to that role in the industry or how they've got to that role or that, that activity in boating. So I've got really interesting interviewees like Kay Cotty, who was, of course, one of our most iconic Australian boaters. She was the first to sail around the world by herself, unassisted, not stopping. And um, she's now in her 70s. She is an awesome woman. And um, she and I had a, a, a chat at her home in her beautiful house um, in northern New South Wales. And uh, that goes over three episodes because it's, it's just such a, because, of course, she's got amazing stories about yeah. not only that, that journey, but she was then involved in boards that created our Maritime Museum. And, you know, there's all sorts of things that her life has impacted on Australia and the world. So, yeah. Um, I talked to her. I talked to Nick Douglas. She's an amazing um, world champion sailor. Um, I talked to people actually in the industry that do things for our boats. So painters, um, the guys that work on, um, think, you know, like the CEO of Prop Speed, you know, pe people that are um, heavily involved in our industry. I talked to um, the CEO of uh, Super Yacht Australia. And on that, we talked about... Um, how women getting into our industry in the super yacht space often get into interior on super yachts yeah. and it's very hard to transition from interior to captain whereas yeah. if they came in at engineer space or exterior they would be able to progress to captain because we keep losing women because being a chief stew is hard work so we keep losing women in their 50s or so because it's just too hard. So they then move on to another industry. Whereas if they had um, started from exterior or engineering, they would go right through to captain, which would be really exciting to have more female captains and super yachts and so on. So it's all people at the top of their game. I talked to, you know, Leslie, who's the CEO of British Marine, who organises British boat shows. So um, shortly I'm going over to Princess Yachts to talk to a whole bunch of people that work at Princess right from um, the apprentices right through to their uh, top management team, all that sort of thing. Um, and it's, it's their stories are fascinating and really interesting. And the way they've come in, it's so many have fallen into the boating industry. And I, I guess we want to make it very clear to people how you can get into the boating industry because we'd love more people in it. Um, and, and so my podcast talks about that and also talks to, to boaters with incredible stories. Nice. Well, and of course, I mean, you're on Instagram. Um, where is your podcast hosted? Oh, all the usuals. So um, yeah. on Spotify and Audible and uh, Podbean. And yeah, if you just search the Boat Prince on, on Spotify on there. Yeah. So nice. And of course, you've got a website. We're going to provide all of that information uh, below this interview when it airs. Um, and as well, if people want to get a hold of you, can they get a hold of you via LinkedIn? Of course. Yeah, I'm on LinkedIn. Um, they can also DM me on Instagram. Um, I, I'm just the boat princess on there. And um, it's it, it gives me such a great thrill when I'll get things like um, a DM in the back of my Instagram saying, I've just got my boat license from a woman, you know, that's, that's yeah. never got it before. I've just got my boat license and I'm going to find out about buying this boat and blah, blah, blah. That is just like, 
I mean, it gives me goosebumps. I mean, I'm blushing about it now because I, I just love it so much that I am actually making a difference and more women are getting into boating because of me and uh, more women are beginning to understand that the boating industry is available to them as well. And, and nice. on that, we've got a dedicated uh, website over here, marinejobs.org.au, which is specifically for jobs in the boating industry. Great. That's good to know as well. Um, I'll make sure to, I'll make sure to put that below here as well. And is that for the entire industry or just in the Australia area? It's in the Australian area at the moment, but I, I sh I'm sure it will become because it will incorporate super yachts and so on. I'm sure it will incorporate the world as time goes on. Right. Yeah. Perfect. Well, you know what? There's so many crew right now that are out there looking for work, and um, you know, I think during we were experienced prior to the pandemic and just after the pandemic, we were experiencing quite a crew shortage. Um, yeah. And it's nice to see that we are now starting to get more and more people back into the industry. Um, and I, I think, you know, it goes with crew as well. There's only certain areas. I mean, you don't see a lot of Canadian crew because, to be honest, we don't know that there's a yachting industry until we get out of Canada because nobody has yachts in Canada. I mean, you know, big yachts. Um, everyone yeah. boats, everyone fishes, you know, we've all got that lake boat. But the super yacht industry is a different beast entirely. Um, and it's not until you move abroad or you go to a place like Fort Lauderdale that you actually understand there is an industry such as that. Um, so it's, it's good to sort of start reaching out and saying, hey, and it's good money too, you know, if you're willing to step up and do the work. Yeah. And, and uh, um, Super Yacht Crew is actually really Australian heavy because we're such a, a yes. boating lifestyle here. So we're kind of used to it. So we, we naturally go into that space which is kind of cool for everyone nikki i want to say thank you ever so much for your time it's really been appreciated oh thanks Maria. no it's lovely to meet you i really love what you're doing it's great that you're doing so much for the yachting industry we really appreciate that and um no it's lovely to chat with you and i hope everybody enjoys the podcast on their drive or their walk or whatever it's it's i cannot tell you how much fun it has been doing this podcast and the people it has brought into my life like yourself um that have just um it's, it's just elevated my life just knowing all those wonderful people that i've interviewed it's been amazing well, and you know what, you obviously tell a story and enjoy telling people stories and that makes it all the more wonderful when um, it is done by somebody who loves what it is that they do. Thank you. Yeah, I'm very passionate about what I do. And, and that's a, a privilege. It's a privilege. I know it's a privilege to own a couple of marinas, a big privilege, but it surrounds me with an amazing team that I couldn't do it without. So I really appreciate that. Nice. Once again, this has been Nikki Vaugh from uh, The Boat Princess. My name is Ria. I have been your host. We'll see you again next time.